Hello everyone. Uh, it's been a minute. Well, more like a month, but yeah, summer vacation. Who really cares? I'm allowed to enjoy it. Now during this month, uh, this video kind of blew up. Say so it was a Danganronpa video, so I think I found my footing, which is why today's Danganronpa character analysis is gonna be about Kanye Omari West, the 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in the school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for him. Look, I'm sorry for making this video. It's just been on my mind, and I've had like a lot of ideas, and this one seemed like the most fun to make as of now, so uh, yeah, enjoy. Now we all know Kanye, or Ye, as the man who bullied Pete Davidson off Instagram for hooking up with his ex, Kim Kardashian, which didn't really end up well for Pete anyways, so yeah, that's that. But this isn't about Pete, this is about Ye. Now, something you may not know about him, is that he actually makes fantastic music. Now this is something that gets very much overlooked because of Ye's recent meme status, but he really does make some good music. Now I know this has been said and done many times before, oh Kanye West makes great music, you should go listen to it, but the reason it happens so often is because it's true, he just makes good music. Now yes, his later albums have been pulled right in to say the least, I can't argue with that. However, his discography has so much variety that there is, hopefully, something for everyone to enjoy. From the soulful beats of College Dropout to the auto-tune heavy melodies of 808s and Heartbreak, Kanye really has it all. Not just that, he features in so many songs and albums by other artists that if you've never heard a song in which he's present, you're probably a liar. Now I could have a very detailed rant on why I love every single Kanye album, but I'm not really a musical expert so I'll leave that to Anthony Fantano. Now let's move on to the next part of the video, which isn't music based, meaning that I can actually talk about things without regurgitating a whole Wikipedia page. Now here's the part you've all been waiting for, the unrestrained Kanye that we've come to know in recent years. Now he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but that doesn't mean he's a lesser person because of it. On the contrary actually. You see, one thing that Kanye has going for him is that he's the realest guy there is. Like what do I mean by real though? Basically, uh, he has his opinions and views, he just never changes them for anyone else. Now, right now you're probably telling yourself, oh, oh my god, he's just like me, he's just like me, for real! I apologize for having to tell you this, but you're probably lying again. Because yeah, while it would be cool for everyone to just stick to their ways, uh, don't give a shit about anyone else, just live life freely. Uh, <laughs> society is restraining us to follow set laws and social cues, making us unable to live at our happiest. Which is why we must revolt against society and change it to all become Kanye West. So while we're all very sad and crying because society restrains us so much, Kanye here is the free bird. So if you ever decide to critique Kanye one day, just be aware, Kanye can be everywhere. Now you're probably telling yourself, but, but, but if Kanye was real, he, he'd have to be something NASA, right? Well, uh, yeah, he's well aware of the fact that he isn't something of an asshole, so much that he even writes about it in his own songs. Now I'm not trying to tell everyone to become an asshole, I hope that's pretty clear already, but even if I were, it wouldn't work either because... Why would you do what the disembodied voice from your computer tells you to do? Or you have enough self-respect to be a decent human being. Either way, good job. Now that we have a quick rundown of how Kanye behaves, I can finally talk about his very silly experiences and moments because boy oh boy, there sure are some. Let's start off with his most famous, probably, his interruption of the VMAs in 2009, which led to controversy and other shenanigans such as hate and uh, <laughs> eternal damnation from the Taylor Swift fandom. Now, Kanye got a lot of shit for doing that, uh, so he had to exile himself, which he did. He exiled himself in Hawaii for like a year or more. And during that time, he recorded his next album, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which came out as one of his best albums and probably one of the best albums of the decade. So yeah, while he may have lost it at the VMAs, he probably made up for it by releasing one of the best albums ever made. So let that be an inspiration to everyone. While you may have done some horrible things in the past, just exile yourself, whether that be in prison or some other place, and just make your magnum opus. Maybe more people should do that actually, just interrupting award ceremonies so they can just release magnum opuses later on. Hmm, that's a thought. Uh, another example is how Kanye West 
was also in a car accident earlier in his career. He had struggled with his label for a while to become a rapper now because originally he was just a producer for them, helping make beats for artists like Jay-Z, Alicia Keys, Janet Jackson, and Drake. After incredibly ballsy negotiation tactics, Kanye managed to get a deal. So he was going to become a rapper, and one night while driving home, he got into a jaw-shattering car accident. So yeah, he had to go through reconstructive surgery, he was in a hospital bed for like, way too long. And at this point, a lot of people would have just given up, you know, they have so much misfortune, but Kanye didn't give up. He recorded a song called Through the Wire, which became one of his best sellers on his album, The College Dropout. The album then released, it became a really big success. He got a lot of other deals to make other albums, and uh, they all work decently well, I think. So yeah, let that be another Kanye West life lesson. When the going gets tough, just rap about it. Oh yeah, another one of these uh, life-changing Kanye West inspirational stories. You know Yeezys? Yeah, nobody believed he could do that. Well, guess what he did? They're probably some of the most successful shoes now. And even if his, you know, uh, latest shoes are somewhat questionable. He still made a lot of money through that and once again just a general inspiration when it comes to shutting up the haters. Another notable example of Kanye West shutting up the haters is when he got attacked by South Park and got transformed into a gay fish. If you're asking yourself what this is about, just uh, Kanye basically likes fish dicks making him a gay fish and he gets gaslit by everyone into thinking he's a gay fish, so eventually he does become a gay fish, and he makes out with other gay fish. Would this incident happen in real life? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe in some earlier stages of Kanye's life, maybe at some point, people might have gaslit him into thinking he's a gay fish. But the thing to note here is that Kanye totally did not retaliate. He is so kind. If the writers of South Park decided to make that episode on Elon Musk instead, first of all, I don't think it would work, but even if it did, Elon Musk would have retaliated with a few uh, mean tweets, and he would have then sent the Reddit hive mind to, I don't know, buy South Park or something. Which is why we need to take example on Kanye, who really did not care about the incident at all, it just made him think about his life decisions, and he totally didn't write lyrics about it in one of his songs- OH COME ON! Speaking of tweets, um, three words, Kanye West tweets. Just go to his Twitter account or just search him up on Google, y you'll see what I'm talking about. He makes- he says some of the best stuff there is, so inspirational. Now just a few final notes, uh, I just want to say that bullying equals bad. Cyberbullying too. Now that whole Pete Davidson thing was pretty funny with all the memes and shit posts that Kanye was posting, like that uh, Civil War one. <laughs> there was like a whole weird Civil War going on Twitter and Instagram with like Kid Cudi, Mike Dean, just yeah, a lot of people. And it brought a few memes out of it, like the I'm not hacked image, which was a template that was used I think reasonably well. And while yes, it's hilarious to see two grown men, well mostly one, going at it online. It, it's also kind of stupid. It just, yeah, you shouldn't really try to replicate that, especially on children who haven't developed their brains yet fully. And, uh, yeah. Bullying equals bad. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, if you like this video, thank you. This is, once again, a one-time thing. I'll probably be moving away from music for a bit, try to go back into gaming. Who knows, maybe I might do an actual Danganronpa video because I have had a few ideas over the month of July. Uh, I've got a, lot of, a few other videos, ideas, that I want to get ready at some point. But uh, yeah, if you enjoy this video, check out the other ones. And you probably won't find anything like it because, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Hashtag Milo Beru Shiny Facts. And peace.